I'm Adam Lowe. I uh, set up Fact and Foundation in 2009, which grew out of the work that Fact and Arte had been doing, really building bridges between new technology and traditional craft skills. So it's a not-for-profit organisation based here in Madrid. It's like a network of people devoted to the use of technology to preserve cultural heritage. Basically, what we do is mapping. We map the surface of objects, the surface of paintings, really looking at how you can digitally record all the qualities of an object. So it really is using technology to zoom in and reveal what's important and how to preserve fragile objects. And in a way, it was this work that led to our first meeting with Javier Marti and with Divi Roy on the island of San Giorgio Maggiore in Venice with the Fondazione Giorgio Chini. We run a centre called Archive. Archive stands for the analysis and recording of cultural heritage in Venice. Uh, we do exactly what the name says. And during the pandemic, we systematically recorded a large chunk of the island of San Giorgio Maggiore. And the goal will be eventually to have a complete digital map of the island and the objects within the island. And it was then that uh, Javier Marti contacted me saying, wouldn't it be amazing, an amazing opportunity to put the Divinron sensors around the island of San Giorgio Maggiore. For me, I was fascinated. I, I loved the idea of what Javier had done. I loved the connection with mobile phone signals and satellite signals that are being beamed down, uh, reflecting off the water. I mean, Divinron is literally uh, taking waste communication signals or the byproduct of the communication signals in order to visualize uh, the dynamic nature of the relationship between land and water. And that's poetry. And I love the fact that it wasn't just based on a mathematical model of tide charts and other things. It was real time recording. For me, this is a dream. Um, one of the things that became very curious as we were uh, looking at Venice was we were also recording paintings by Canaletto and Bellotto and meeting people who have been working on the water height in Venice in relation to the buildings. And I think what we can say clearly or what, what the experts can say clearly is that Venice since the time of Canaletto, since the 18th century, the, the relationship between the land and water has changed to a degree of about 67 centimetres. So I think we can say Venice is subsiding at a rate of five or six millimetres a year. And I think what's happened in Venice is incredibly important both for Divi Rod, for Archive and for Factum Foundation. Because, as I said, Factum has this network. The new part of the network is what's happening in Oulu, in the middle of Finland, at the top of the Gulf of Bothnia, um, just outside the Arctic Circle. So if Venice is sinking, at around five or six millimetres a year. Olu is rising. Olu is rising because of what's called post-glacial rebound. So since the last ice age, but, but increasingly more recently, the pressure on the land has gone, and so the land springs back. The melting ice is having a second impact. Um, Gulf of Bothnia is increasingly becoming fresh water. And that's fascinating. So this is a sea, but it's a sea in which freshwater fish can live. So pike and perch and chub can live in the sea. And to me, that's a mind-blowing example of change. So this measuring of the relationship between the water, the land, the qualities of the water is absolutely critical to what we're trying to do in Oulu. So, by chance, my wife, who's an architect, uh, Charlotte Skeen Catley, and I acquired a concrete silo built by one of the world's greatest architects, Alvar Alto's first industrial building. This project is a very unusual one that sort of presented itself to us in a way, rather than the other way around. Um, and it's grown into something that we're really fascinated by. And it, it's all grown out of this one extraordinary, iconic, concrete silo. And, and this is Alvar Aldo and his wife Aino. His first industrial building in 1931, when 
when the world was viewed very differently, when resources were just infinite and you could tear down and grind up whatever you needed to. And uh, so we, we thought this could be an opportunity to, to see whether the building could almost be used as a critique of itself. Do you know, how the world has changed and, and how climate has, has been such a big part of that. So we're basically turning a, a former wood chip silo into a performance event and exhibition space. And we then want to create a, a new structure next to it, which will be a research centre. There became this really interesting connection to what's going on in other parts of the world and the kind of, of, of information that, that Factum is getting from Divi Rod now in, in Venice and along the coast of Portugal. So this idea that you, you could somehow start forming a network of research all started to suggest itself. But the truth is, every object is itself an articulate evidence that reveals and opens thousands of different narratives. This is really the focus of Factum's work. And the narrative we're on at the moment is, you know, Venice is sinking and Olin's rising literally. And what can those things tell us? And what can Divirod help us with in understanding those things? And how can we use that to get a wider audience to say, actually the world is changing so fast and we have a collective responsibility to ensure that the next generation not only inherits objects in a way they can understand, but also inherits an environment that they can live in.